you have to have a little bit of trust in yourself to kind of allow yourself to recognize what's going on with the other side. You can't be afraid of it. Now, the reason trusting your influence, your intuition is why can I not talk today? Let me take another sip of coffee real quick. Let's see what we got going on here. Hmm. My words are just trying not to come out right. The reason it is so important to learn how to trust your intuition is because your conscious mind processes 40 bits of information per second. Your unconscious mind processes 20 million bits of information per second. So there's a big disparity in that number. 40 bits of information, not really that much. When you're talking about how many things your unconscious mind is picking up each second, you get a lot of information if you learn how to trust that. How are we doing, Troy? We are doing good. I just had to say one thing. When you took your shot of coffee, the people that were on the screen, everybody else took a hit too. So I just, it, it, when we get to this other part, I'll, I'll, I'll bring that back up for a reason. Okay. <laughs> awesome. So labels have a very specific structure. Um, you're going to be saying, it seems like, it sounds like, it looks like, it feels like. You can use it or you can use you. It is neutral. It's where you should probably stay when you're starting to use the skills because it is neutral. You can use you and it's, it's definitely more engaging, but if you're not really very careful about the tone of voice that you have, using you cannot go very well for you if you're not careful. So you can say, it seems like you're angry, or you can say, you seem angry. The you that I just said was very accusatory. People don't respond well to that. So it's better if you just stick with it in the beginning until you're dealing with somebody who you know for sure feels a certain way and you can say it without that little sarcastic kind of accusatory tone in your voice. Now, when you're using labels, actually, I don't know why we just have this on the label slide because it's using any of our skills. Do not use the word but after you say something because it is an erasing word. So everything you say after the word but erases everything you said before it. So if you say, you know, um, you seem angry, but you really don't need to be. You just erase that perfectly good label by, erase, by, by saying the word but. If you use the words and or because, you're actually either explaining the label or you're stepping on it. So what you need to do instead of actually putting one of those words in there after you use a really good label or even after a mirror, you want to just go quiet, okay? Let it let the person process what you just said. Don't erase it or explain it right away. One thing I want you to remember through this process is if you are explaining, you're losing. Okay, so when you use our skills, you don't want to explain them. You want to like drop them. It's like dropping the mic. You just put it out there and let it sit. Okay, with a mirror, you're repeating back the last one to three words. You want to be careful, not go more than five, because if you're getting up there in numbers, you're looking more at a paraphrase and it's no longer become, it's no longer a mirror. So it can be from anywhere in the conversation, but this does take practice. If you're listening to someone and they're going on for, you know, three, four sentences and you hear something that you want more information about, you mirror that specific thing. Okay. It's not an issue. It doesn't break someone's train of thought because they already brought it up. So they, they already have it in their mind. What you're doing is if they're giving you three or four different issues and there's one particular one you want to talk about, you go that direction with your mirror. And that's a way that you can kind of control the conversation um, and get the information that you want. You want to use labels and mirrors and get as much information as possible from the other side while giving as little information as possible away about yourself. That's the best way to practice. It's also not mirroring body language. Now, I don't discount any body language. It has its place. And I'm pretty sure Troy's going to bring up my coffee drink in here in a second. But um, if someone that you're talking to rubs their nose like this, a lot of times you'll rub your nose because somewhere in your brain, your brain says, why are they rubbing their nose? Do I have something on my face? Um, or they do something with their ear. So you'll, you'll do something with your ear. A lot of times it's unconscious. Okay. It's a very unconscious thing that people do. Um, 
but we're not really talking about mirroring body language because in the world that we came from, we were on the phone with people. So we weren't able to really see body language. So it's not that we don't put any stock in body language. It can be extremely important. It's just not the most important thing. And we're not talking about mirroring body language. So we're not telling you if someone crosses their arms, you cross their arms, you cross your arms. We're not telling you to mirror that body language. Um, it can be kind of fun to kind of mess with it though, because a lot of times if you do something, people will see it and they'll do it also. And I'm thinking that's what Troy saw with the coffee drinking. You hit the nail right on the head and two other people actually caught it earlier. And I, I, I commented, they, they picked it up quickly. <laughs> Very cool. So, you know, you can do that with mirrors and sometimes, especially if you're getting used to using mirrors, that can be helpful for kind of throwing things out there and, and seeing how much people are paying attention to you. Okay. Are we good to move on? <laughs> 